you think about the future of television, the question you have to ask yourself is, how are you defining television? We don't know anymore what television is, and that's part of the point. Maybe a smartphone, and maybe a netbook, or you may even be in an environment where you can watch it on your PC. Every device within the screen becomes a portal for television. In the future, there really is no such thing as TV versus internet versus mobile. It's basically content and what you're going to watch on the screen. So television could be, you know, sitting in front of your, in your living room, or it could be a laptop, or it could be a mobile device. And the proliferation of video content to these other devices adds a whole new dimension to, uh, to what video entertainment is all about. And it doesn't matter what screen it's on, as long as someone can get access to it and has the ability to watch it when they want it, where they want it. So all of that suggests a very different way that television operates in the culture. Not a one-screen model, but a multi-screen model. In any given week, you have about 35,000 hours of content coming through that box or available through that box just in those channels. And then you add the 40,000 titles you know, downloadable from Amazon, uh, Netflix, uh, titles available, you know, 12,000 and growing. So more and more consumers are going to have to deal with a world of basically infinite choice. Just as when the web exploded, we needed to have powerful search engines. As this information now explodes across all media platforms, we need to have new tools which support finding and engaging with that material in a meaningful way. If you think about what TV is going to be like in the future, one of the big trends is going to be how do I make TV social again? TV was originally social. People would gather around their TV to, to watch it in the evening. The ability to read something and immediately forward it, to respond to it, to remix it, you know, right there on the machine is enormously appealing. It's not about personalization of media, it's about socialization. What we're going to see today, or going forward, is sort of the concept of watch globally, but respond socially. And um, people will have these incredible you know, experiences together, but at the same time, using social network platforms that respond. I think this, this is moving us back uh, to the social element of it, where we're all able to enjoy content together, as opposed to a, uh, as a, a passive individual experience. And I think that is what excites me most. I think the days are bright if we can figure out how to harness that technology and use it in a way that really um, creates great storytelling, um, but also makes things really relevant to the consumer. It's a world of opportunity to figure out how to make TV better. And uh, you have a, a unique convergence of technology changing, uh, industry is open to change, and consumers are used to being entertained in different ways. Leveraging all that to change the TV experience is going to be a fantastic, uh, fantastic job. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Justin Ratner. Hey, thanks everyone. Great to see you again, and I really appreciate you sticking around for the, the last keynote, the third day of, uh, of IDF. Well, I think you can see from that that TV isn't TV anymore. It's out of the box, it's off the wall, and it's not going back anytime soon. TV will be everywhere, on all your devices, whenever and wherever you want to watch it. And TV isn't about this show or about that movie. It's about personal content, it's about professional content, and it's about games, as you just saw, and it's about applications of all kinds. TV will be whatever you want it to be. You, the developers, are going to define the future of TV, and that's what we're here today to talk about. If you look at the trends of TV, it's going exponential. By 2015, get ready for these numbers, 500 billion hours of content. Truly a humanly unknowable amount of entertainment, but available to anyone. And it's about 12 billion devices with a broadband connection to all of that content. That's more than one TV-capable device for every man, woman, and child on the planet in 2015. Amazing. There's no question that TV will remain at the center of our lives. To help us get a sense of these trends, I'm going to bring out someone who lives and breathes television. Please welcome Comcast fellow, Mark Francisco. Come on out, Mark.
Hey, Morning. Great to have you here. Hi, bud. I want to know one thing. What does it feel like to uh, have a whole city named after you? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it's really strange when they check in the hotels and they look twice. It's Mark <laughs> Francisco Sanford. Get the address right here. <laughs> That's great. Um, I'm sure it's not the first time you've looked at uh, the numbers uh, I just showed. So, um, what do they really tell us? I mean, at Comcast, what do you what do you think about when you see numbers like that? Well, I, I certainly think that television's future is in good hands. Each advance in technology, whether it's process or algorithm or integration or materials, just helps to blur the lines of distinction between the various families of devices. So. You know, how is, how is TV going to change to respond to all of that? Well, what we're seeing is platform independent development where uh, standards are taking hold and developers are gravitating towards a standard development environment. As a result, television is changing from being a device to an application. This is going to allow to create a much more highly personalized and social experience for television. Well, there's no question that experience is, is at the heart of that. I mean, I think, you know, we heard that in Eric's keynote. You've mentioned it uh, again. You know, um, when we talk about experiences, I think about things like 3D TV. What, what can you tell us about that? Yes, yeah, certainly. So television can scale as an application. It's fidelity between uh, small battery-operated handheld devices and large, immersive, multi-dimensional experiences. So what, what you're seeing now is the ability to take stereoscopic 3D TV and pass it through existing broadcast channels. The cable industry is promoting the use of what is shown behind us as the over-under spatial multiplexing method. This allows you to take the left eye and collapse it in the vertical dimension, place it over the right eye, collapse it in the vertical dimension, and fit within an existing frame so it can be broadcast over the cable networks. Wow, I'm really impressed. You guys are, are moving at light speed <laughs> with 3D uh, technology. So, you know, I, it's not done, but it sounds like you're making good progress. Um, you know, what really excites you? What gets you up in the morning? Well, it's certainly things like 3D. As we can prepare our networks uh, to, to handle things like 3D and the standards take hold, mm -hmm. consumer devices are start to standardize and people can make the choices, bring them to their house and enable us to bring such experiences to the home. Then what we want to do is take entertainment and fit to the personal interest and the social settings of the, of, of the viewer. It, TV is going to be more interactive, yet it won't require more activity to enjoy. Interactivity is going to be an integral part of the experience. It's clear that the content is still the most important part of television, yet that content needs to be met and should be matched to the personal interests. Right. Okay. Hey, thank you, Mark. You know, it's just it's just great to have you here. I can't thank you so much. Give it up for Mark Francisco. Thank you very much.